For my master, one for my master, one for I don't know who. Do you know who? Would you like to take some wool? No, 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 no. No. Hey, yo. What will I do with so much of wool? Any idea that you have that you can give me? What will I do with so much of wool? Wool. Hmm. Why don't you weave a story? Hmm. Why don't I weave a story with the wool? Brilliant idea. 
brilliant idea. But what story do I weave? What is the story that I weave? Hmm. Why don't you weave an Indian story? Wow, it seems like the gods are speaking to me right now. Indian story. Hmm. Then why not speak about the king of kings himself? Who has ruled this world and the country? What do you say? What do you say? What do you say? What do you say? Why right? Okay. But before we start, we always say our thank you. So thank you so much. First, to the Guru. Gita Man, thank you from Kathalaya, who has taught us storytelling. She's a master in herself. Thank you to my friends at Kathabhumi. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to share a story. And with the wool, I'm going to weave a story. And never, ever can I miss my beautiful listeners. So thank you. Namaskar. And thank you so much for listening to me. So do you know who the king of kings is? The king of kings who once ruled. That happened long, long ago. So long ago that few of us know how long ago. And during that time when the people of this world used to live a little longer, people in this world knew magic. People in this world knew power. People in this world knew goodness, kindness, humbleness. And that point of time, there was a king who was known for his magnanimity, who was known for his beautiful sense of wisdom, of pride, of glory, valor. And he was none other than our own King Vikramaditya. The guy who was called by the King of the Lords. You know who the King of the Lords are? Or rather he is. What's it? It is Lord Indra. And he is the one who is to call King Vikramaditya. At that point of time, magic was so well known that King Vikramaditya will go up to heaven where Indra would sit in his assembly and say, Vikramaditya, can you solve some problems that I have? And Vikramaditya gladly would solve them. He had a lot of people who were supported him and told how great he was. Similarly, what happened once, was that there was a Rishi who called him and said, I have a tough task and I know that you are the only one who can solve it. King Vikram said, Prabhu, tell me what is that you want me to do? I will do it for you. I will not disappoint you. So King thought about it. And then at that point of time, the Rishi said, King, but you shouldn't go back after what I tell you thought and said I would keep my word and you believe me that I will do what you say so the Rishi said King I have a tough task for you I want you to go to the deep jungles in the deep jungle there is a huge banyan tree huge tree and in that tree there is a ghost which is lying upside down and you have to get me that ghost and no questions asked until you get the ghost to me. King Vikramadil said, hmm, interesting channel, interesting challenge. I need to do something about this. All right, I will do the purpose. And he bent him forward of the Rishi and said, I will meet you when I get the ghost. So King Vikramaditya started his journey, got on his horse and started going. As he reached the borders of the jungle, he saw this was massive, this was big, huge jungle. And he got down from the horse and he said, I think this being a thick, thick, thick jungle, I will rather walk and try to find out what it is. It might take me some time, it's okay, but let me go and find out. So King Vikramaditya got on from his horse, left his horse 
and he started walking into the jungle. And as he walked and walked and walked, he was in search of the huge banyan tree. Days went, weeks went, and finally he found the big, huge banyan tree swinging, swinging, swinging in air. And in that, he saw there was a white color ghost which was lying upside down, feet bent with head down, hairs let out, and it was flowing, it was swinging along with the tree branches. It was dead in the night. King Vikramaditya thought, let me now get it down. He got up onto the branch, climbed up the tree, onto the branch now. And then as he was about to hold the ghost, the ghost fought. And King Vikramaditya fought with the ghost. Fought, fought, fought. And the battle, finally, King got the ghost. And as he got the ghost, he put it on his back and he said, I will take you to the Rishi who has promised. The ghost said, hmm, okay, I will go with you since you have caught me now. And he happily got onto the back of the king and they started walking. And he said, but one promise, you are not going to open your mouth till we reach. If you open your mouth, I will go back into the tree. Mm -hmm. King Vikram thought for a while and said, okay, I keep my promises and I'm known to keep my promises. So if I open my mouth and talk to you, go back, but I'll get you again. So our man started walking and it was a deep jungle. So the Betal said, the ghost, the Betal friend, he said, you know what? It's a long journey and you're going to travel quite a distance. You have to travel outside to the forest. From there, you have to travel to the Rishis. It's a long journey. So during this long journey, I will tell you a story. And that will keep us entertained. What do you say? Am I saying the truth? What do you say? It will keep you entertained. King Vikramaditya knew what the promise was. He just nodded his head and he went on. So the Bethal started telling stories. But he always had a condition. And this is the Betal, you know, very clever Betal. So he said, I always have a condition. At the end of the story, I will ask you a question. If you tell me the truth, all right, you survive. But if the answer is wrong, I will split your head into multiple pieces and you will not survive. King Vikramaditya smiled and said, hmm. And then he walked on. So the Betal will tell a story. At the end, he will ask a question and our man will go back. And this kept happening. And during one such catch, that King Vikramaditya caught the Betal and going on, the Betal started a beautiful story. He said, you know, King, like you, there were many kings who have come ahead. And one such king had four sons. Hmm? These four sons were brilliant, but he wanted these sons to become exceptionally good. And he said, I have to send these people somewhere that they can learn something even more better, even more brilliant. So what he did, he found out a Rishi who was doing a tapa, a kind of penance. He was praying and, and, and living deep inside the forest. Our man goes there. He meets up with the Rishi and says, Sir, I have a request. You have been known to be a great Rishi. And I have heard that you are a great teacher. I want to leave my four sons with you. Can you please teach them different things in life? And when they are done, they will come back to the, my palace. I request you, I humbly want you. The Rishi looked at the four kids and said, Sure, leave them with me. 
and I will teach them different things that they would learn. So the king was happy, delighted, and he went back. And he went back to his place, leaving the four princes with the Rishi. So the Rishi started his teachings. Hours started, days started, days went, weeks, weeks started, went, month, month went to years. And the Rishi was teaching them. As the Rishi taught them, they started growing up with the years going by. After many years, the Rishi then looked at them and said, Kids, I want to teach you one special yarn, one thing special that you can take back from here and be proud of it and can you fly anywhere that you want to be. And he said, you tell me what you want to do. The fourth kid was a little naughty one, you see. And being the naughty one, he was very quick to come to a conclusion. And he said, Prabhuji, can you teach me how the bones work? You know, the bones, the bones inside the body. So she said, why do you want to learn? He said, I love the structures, the way they join together. Look how I am and what it does. I want to learn that. So she said, sure, beta, I'll teach you. Let your other brothers also decide what they want to do. The sec, the third one took some time, a little patient, you see, as, as elders go, they become patient more and more. You will also become patient. So they became patient and a week later, the third brother comes and says, Guruji, I have realized what I want. I want to know how this whole muscle system, you see, they work. The bloods that flow in, how do that work completely? I want to learn it. Can you teach me, please, Guruji? I'm very fascinated with it. The Guru says, sure, beta, I will teach you. Let your two brothers also decide what they want to learn. So we'll start the process together. And they continue doing. A month later, the second one comes and says, Guruji, you know, I've been fascinated by this skin. And I want to learn how these skins come together. You see that deer has got a beautiful one, they're shiny, shiny. Huh? The jackal has got a little rugged, rugged. The porcupine has got spiky, spiky. How does all this happen? I want to know. And I want to learn it. Will you teach me, please? He said, yes, beta. Why not? I will teach you. Let your eldest brother come back. The eldest one said, after six months of thinking, contemplating, trying to figure out what to do, what to do, what to do. He comes and says to Guruji, Guruji, I have been thinking. How am I alive? What is this that keeps me alive? Makes me walking around. What is that animal that keeps it running? I think there is something. The Guru says, Are you talking about the Atma? The Sishya says, I think so. I am talking about the Atma. And the Guru says, Sure, I think you have a brilliant proposition. You are going to talk about something way beyond all who have asked me. I will be delighted to teach you. And the four started their journey of learning something new, something different, something fantastic. So all of them, days went by learning, they experimented, they did this, they did that. It's like your science school lab. Then they start experimenting with, they start teaching, doing things a lot. And our guru kept teaching. And when they were grown up, they learned the art of it. He said, but all of you have learned a lot of things, especially you have learned about your own self, about a special skill that will enable you to become strong, unique. So go out and explore life. And the four of them started off in the journey. But before they left, the Guru said, listen and remember one thing. What you learned is very important, but the most important thing is common sense. Apply wherever you are and you will be very successful. So the four of them heard it hmm, and they started. They packed up the bags, 
they put it back on their shoulders and they started walking. They started going back to the jungle because the roads were only through the jungle. So they started going back. As they were going back, they chit-chatted, they talked about how beautiful this nature is, what they have learned, how they're going to meet up with the father, the mother, so many people that they're going to go, who the youngest one is going to rule, the youngest one is going to do this, the other one is going to do that. So they all spoke about started going around. And as they went by, they all of a sudden came and sat down and said, Yapa, we have walked a lot, let's take some rest. Tomorrow again, we'll walk back. And they took rests. And as they took rests, The youngest one looked around and said, I smell that there is a carcass somewhere, a dead body lying somewhere. And he gets up and starts looking around. And he finds, ah, brothers, come. There is a dead body lying there. Nothing but the skeletal structure out there. And I would like to use my mantra. The four, three of them look at him. Are you sure? You want to use that? Sure. The youngest one said, why not? I have learned something new. Why shouldn't I try? The three of them said, okay, try it out. What's harm in actually putting them together? Let him do. And he starts to meditate. And he goes on for hours. And all of a sudden, the bone starts to assemble. And they comes the structure of it. He says, wow, that's a lion. I did. What do you say? The third one says, hey, if you can try, I can't do it. Huh? I will also do this. He sat down. I said, the other two said, wait, wait, wait. Are you sure you want to do this? He said, why not? I will do it. I will show you that I know something. The youngest one can do it. I can't do it. Huh? And he sat down and he started. And after six hours of mantras that he went on saying, came alive the beautiful structure of the muscles on the bones. He could see the structure and he went around appreciating his work. So, wow, look at the redness in this. It's like the blood flowing through the vessels, the muscles, the organs, everything. The eyes are also there, but they're looking lifeless like this. The second one says, now he was itchy. Hmm. The two of you have shown it, now I will not show up. He looked at the elder brother, brother, I want to contribute. The elder one says, be careful, huh? don't do anything else, but try it. Huh? So he sits down. And he starts. And he starts putting together slowly. The skin starts developing around. The mane comes out of the lion. Beautiful. He creates it as one of the beautiful creatures that he had, had created. One of the most magnificent lion structures that came out. All the nails were beautifully there. The eyes, the ear, the mane, the tail was beautifully carved out and had a beautiful fur at the end. It was nice. It was amazingly done. And at the end, he satisfied. He looked at it. The three brothers looked at each other and said, how beautiful that the lion looks like. And they went around and round and round. The fourth brother was very quiet. He didn't want to say anything. He didn't want to do anything. He quietly sat there. Looking at and appreciating. Yes. Well done, well done. And then the three of them look at it. Brother, what do you say? Why didn't you use it, your tricks into it? Hey, you have learned something called Atma Vatma. Why don't you get some Atma into it? The brother says, no, no, I will not do that. I think we should hold it. That's why Atma is very, very pure and we shouldn't touch, tamper with that. Oh, so you don't know how to use your skills here? No, no, I know to use my skills, but I don't want to use it here. It's not good. It's not good. Use it to the right place. Why here? The third one says, look, brother, we three have put together so much of effort and we have bought such a beautiful animal alive. What is this that you're doing? Please put some light. We'll see how our creation looks like. Now, all four of us together, we brothers in arms, we'll bring this life. After a lot of deliberation that went back and forth, he says, okay, 
but it will take time. And he sat meditating. And he started, energy started coming out of his body. And this energy started coming up and slowly getting into the animal in front, the lion that they had created, started going in, going in, going in. After 12 hours of meditation, hard meditation, a man wakes up and says, Mm-hmm. And they wait. Just all four brothers, curious, looking at what's happening, what's happening. And then they see the lion coming out. And he looks ravishingly hungry. He looks around, he sees these four brothers looking at him. Very cheerful. Yay! We got it! We have got our first animal alive. We have done it from skeleton to that of being alive. Wow. The lion was dead for a long time and was very, very hungry. <laughs> Looked around and it said the four food. All of a sudden they said, oh my goodness, why is it looking at us like that? What is happening? Lion, we gave you life. We gave you life. You are our slave, huh? Servant, servant, remember. You do what I say. Sit, sit. Lion, sit. What will the lion do? What is the nature of the lion? When it's hungry, it will go for the kill. And he found these four brothers. Before even they could realize that huge lion that they created, jumped on each one of them. They ate it off. Finished. Popped it off. All four gone. All four. <sighs> and the lion happily went back. Where? To its den. All the four are dead. That's when Betal comes back and says, Raja Vikramaditya, now tell me, who is the biggest sinner of this? Who had sinned the most? Is it the king who left the four kids? Is it the Rishi? Is it the youngest one who started building the animal? Is it the second one who gave the skeletal? Is it the third one who put the skin? Or is the fourth one the eldest one? Who is the sinner? Vikramaditya was quiet. He was walking with the Betal. Very patiently walking. The Betal says, Raja, remember, if you don't give me the right answer, I will break your head into many millions of it and you will die. The Raja laughed and he said, Betal, the biggest sinner in this whole thing is the eldest brother. He was the eldest, supposed to be most important person. Supposed to be the king. He should have common sense. Yes, there was kiddishness in all of this. All of them. They all played with it. Played with the learning, which is good. But the common sense that the Rishi actually asked them to should have been prevailing in all. Especially the one who is going to be the king. So it is the king, to be king, the eldest of all, who is supposed to be the biggest sinner. And he is the one who is one who has seen the most. The moment King completed his statement, Betal said, <laughs> Raja, you proved that you are the most intelligent one. You are the one who knows what is happening. You know the wisest. But you forgot the moment you open your mouth, I am God. And Betal goes back. Zup. Raja Harishan again left out. He says, ah, I have to catch him again. Goes back in his search in the adventure for another time to catch the Betal, get him for another story. And this continued for 21 times. The 22nd time, 
King Vikramaditya was successful. But that story for another time. So Katha Bhumi, we'll come back and share another story. Take care of yourself. Have a lovely weekend ahead. And enjoy stories. Live up to the imaginative world. Tada bye bye. Sadat Sadi Goff. Namaskar.